All right, let's take a look at the two, you know, arguably the two best trimmers on the market and why you might choose one over the other. Now I will tell you, I've owned my Gerard for a long time. I just recently purchased the Henderson. Yes, I paid for both of them. And yes, we can just get it out of the way. They are both expensive. Uh, but I definitely think they're both worth the money if you do a lot of trimming. So let me kind of go through how each of them works in their own way comparatively. And, you know, the truth is there's going to be things that might be more advantageous for one person versus another that might help you choose. I've never seen a head-to-head -head between the Henderson and the Giroud. So um, here you go. And, you know, this is as unbiased as I can be about them just given my experience with them. So the first thing I want to talk about is how you set them up. Now, the Giroud is freestanding. Uh, you know, it's got rubber bumpers on two sides so that you can either position it standing vertical, which is what most people do, or you can lay it down so that you deal with it horizontally. Uh, either way works great. I've done both. Uh, I think just traditionally I've sort of gotten in the habit of using it vertically. Uh, the the uh, and, uh, Henderson, however, does need to be bolted or clamped down uh, in some fashion. Uh, it does have the motor in the back. If I loosen up my rocker clamps, you can see that it does not free, you know, it does not free stand in any way. And if I were to apply pressure to it, uh, as if I was using it, it would move around. So there is the first primary difference between the two, uh, you know, as far as how uh, they actually sit. Uh, if we get into running them, I have a decimal meter here and you know, I'm gonna, well, what can I use as a gauge? I'll just use my funnel. So let's turn this on and I am going to hold it one funnel length away. It's averaging right about 74, 75. And I have to talk at about 88 decibels for you to hear me right now. 80, 82 decibels, 85 decibels. So somewhere in that range to get over the sound of this. So right about 75 decibels at, you know, a funnel length away. Let's turn this one on. Now this does have a little rheostat on the side. I am going to turn it on to high. Okay. And I'm going to hold it the same distance from the motor unit. I'm sitting right at 59. 61, 62, 61, and I'm talking at uh, right about high 70, 72, 76, 78 decibels in order for you to hear me. So that right there was one of the first things I noticed. I was able to still listen to music while using my Henderson. A um, little tougher when I'm using my Gerard again, not a deal breaker, but if noise is an issue, obviously the Gerode is a little louder and a little higher pitch than the Henderson. Let's talk about the trimmer unit itself. Now, I don't wanna take apart my Gerode, so I have another cutter head here. The way the Gerode cutter head works, you've got uh, this holder, and then you've got a, a three-sided cutter head uh, that holds in here, it's slotted. The advantage with the Gerode is that you can move this around to perfectly fit whatever diameter neck you have. So if you want to um, you know, trim a neck that's just been sized down or expanded out, you can certainly make that adjustment. Uh, the downside that I found over the years is that um, you know, if you're not careful with this, you can end up with the cutter just a little bit not flush with the inside of the rail. Occasionally I have to clean out the rail to make sure there's nothing that is putting this cutter at a little bit of a cockeye. But this cutter head lasts a very, very long time. Uh, I, I can't even remember what he says, like twenty or 30,000 cases, which that's uh, about what I have on this Gerode. Um, I've broken one by dropping it, uh, but it is, um, uh, you know, the carbide cutters do last a very long time. But that's how the Gerode works. It threads down in and then you use, um, uh, that's not even fair because that's one that I had to make for it. Um, let me show you. So here's the actual Gerode uh, case holder that comes with it. It is spring loaded so that when you push down, uh, the brass would come through. Well, this is stuff ready to 
ready to use, but when you push down, it comes down and then can be cut, okay? Uh, so that is the cutter and holder uh, system for the Gerode. And, you know, one of the complaints that people have always had with the Gerode is that it's tough to get really precise with it. Uh, that, obviously, I've overcome using one of the wooden click die rings. Uh, that has made it really easy to come out and just, you know, click up and down one or two and uh, get your one thousandths increments there. So I've been really happy uh, with that. The uh, Henderson, I can't really uh, easily uh, take the cutter head off to show you, but I will take the uh, collet system off real quick and show you what that looks like. So the Henderson is going to be more universal. You don't buy a bunch of different um, holders. You have a tapered uh, collet system that holds a very wide range of uh, cases. And so that just slides on this side of it. And then your cutter uh, is caliber specific. There is some adjustability in it if you wanted to, but it does come preset. I have found that he sends them uh, really well set. Um, you know, that being said, Gerode also, when you buy his cutters, will send them preset uh, based on uh, factory cartridge, and they're also very accurate. So uh, both companies send their cutter heads ready to go. Uh, it's up to you if you want to monkey with them at all. The next thing we can talk about is the brass containment, so the shavings. The Gerode probably has a slight advantage in this one simply because he uses this clear PVC that seals up pretty tight. I get a little bit of uh, brass dust outside of it, but pretty rare. I've built up as much as a quarter inch of shavings in there before vacuuming it out. The Henderson uses a slightly different system. Uh, it is a an aftermarket additional accessory that you have to purchase, and it's this little containment shield system uh, that is right here, and then also contains a holder for an acro bin below, so you're kind of getting two things in one with it. Uh, if this was not here, the shavings would obviously go out to the side and you just have to clean them up that way. But I do like the way this kit works. It is not airtight uh, in the sense like the Gerode is. So it does have a little bit of opening on the side. Uh, I do have, you know, after doing about 150 pieces of brass, uh, you know, I do have a few little pieces of shavings outside, but nothing I couldn't deal with and nothing that's gonna affect the operation or the usage. Uh, so I definitely think if you're going to get the Henderson, getting this shaving kit with the Acrobin holder, that's an absolute must in my book. Price-wise, uh, I believe the as of this video, uh, this is running the Gerode with one caliber is running somewhere in the 550 range. The Henderson is running in the 750 range. Uh, additional uses. Now, you can purchase a meat plat trimmer for uh, just about every bullet size that's out there. There's, I don't know, five or six different accessory uh, meat plat trimmers that you can get with different holders so that if you like to trim before you point your bullets, the Gerode will let you do that. The Henderson currently doesn't have any additional accessories. He is, however, working on an outside neck turning unit and an inside neck turning unit, and there was something else, but I, I can't remember what he told me uh, as far as that goes. Uh, customer service. I haven't had to deal with Gerode in a long time. Uh, I know some friends who have ordered stuff recently. He appears to be, or I think his son's running it now for the most part, uh, from what I've heard. Uh, they appear to be very responsive in terms of getting orders fulfilled, uh, but there is a pretty decent backlog on these uh, in terms of months. I want to say three months right now to get one. The Henderson, uh, this dude picks up the phone. He's in his machine shop. He will spend as much time as it takes on the phone talking to you. Uh, I called up. Obviously, he doesn't know who I am. Not that I'm some big star, but, uh, you know, he, he didn't know me from, you know, Adam. And, um, you know, I just said, hey, I've got a Gerode. I'm thinking about getting a Henderson. You know, walk me through what makes it different. The guy did not disparage the Gerode at all. In fact, he said it's a great unit. Um, he walked me through the differences and said, you know, if you think it's going to meet your needs, I'm happy to build one and, and, you know, you can buy one and I'll build it and it'll be gone, you know, out the door in three weeks. Um, and if it doesn't sound like it'll meet your needs, I know you'll be happy with the Gerode. So he was very, very, um, you know, um, complimentary of what is obviously his closest competitor here. Uh it did obviously was something I wanted to order, so I did order it, and I will tell you, he was dead on. I had it like almost three weeks to the day that I ordered, 
and um, shipping was fast. Came FedEx. Uh, it's out of California. The Gerode comes out of Texas. As far as use goes, let me, I've got 20 pieces of brass here and 20 pieces of brass here. Uh, I'm just going to go through the process of trimming so that uh, you can see uh, what the time is on 20 pieces. And you know, this is a very anecdotal test, but you know, hopefully at least it gives you an idea. So we're gonna start with the Giraud. Now I have a lot of familiarity with using this over the years. I'm obviously pretty quick with it. Um, you know, I'm still learning the Henderson, but uh, I still think this will be a pretty fair test of what it's capable of. The Henderson's a pretty quick study. So let's give the Giraud a test. I am going to fire up my timer here. 20 pieces of brass and I need something to put them in. So here's my 20 for that. And here we go. And start. And I am trying to go as fast as I can. Uh, I'm not, you know, like, you know, if somebody was doing this, maybe they'd spend a, a little extra. But, you know, this is how I would normally do it anyway. So I'm not speeding up what is my normal process. I just tend to go as fast as I can with it. Okay, so that was 40 seconds. So pretty darn quick. Uh, and that was 20 pieces of brass. Now, uh, with the Henderson, in fact, this is a little full. Okay, so as opposed to pushing in on this, I'm going to be putting a piece of brass, tightening it, uh, and then it's about an 11 to uh, 12 o'clock motion to get it in and out. So let me go ahead and reset this and get at a good angle here. Let's get this turned on. And same thing, brass in hand, and let's hit start. Now that one did not get expanded. So that, that does at least tell me that the brass, uh, you know, that particular one needs to get expanded again. And I'm feeling the stop. There's a, there's a hard stop that this is hitting. Now again, fairly anecdotal test, but we're at just at a minute there. So 20 seconds longer to do 20 pieces. So an extra second per piece of brass. Uh, again, I don't think that's horrible, uh, but everybody's uh, you know use will vary. Uh, and over the course of say a couple hundred pieces of brass, uh, you know it, it might add up. Uh, I think I could get a little faster with the Henderson. Obviously, I'm still kind of getting used to the, you saw me kind of stumble at the beginning, uh, you know, trying to do it as fast as I could. Uh, but once you kind of get in the rhythm of it, I probably could have shaved, you know, another five, 10 seconds off. But uh, without a doubt, I'd probably say the edge, at least at this point for me using it, would go to the Gerard in terms of speed. Uh, you know, ultimate speed is gonna be there. Uh, the next thing is, uh, how it actually, uh, you know, chamfers, deburs, and trims. Now, I'm going to put up a picture here. And that shows you side by side uh, what the, you know, what my normal chamfer, deburr, trim looks like on uh, the Gerode versus the Henderson. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, uh, in fact, I separated uh, 
uh, 10 pieces of Henderson trimmed brass and 10 pieces of Gerard trimmed brass. I'm gonna run them through my amp press. So I'm gonna load them. I need to put primers in, I need to put powder in, and then I'm going to physically load them on the amp press. And we're gonna see if there is a difference uh, in terms of how the consistency across the graph looks like. Uh, and if there's any noticeable difference along that curve between how the two trim. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what to expect on this. Uh, I will tell you just using the Henderson that I have uh, so far, my bullets are seating smoother than I've ever felt them before. Uh, you know, in my head, uh, using my zero press, they feel a little smoother than the Gerode, but I think that's where using the amp press is really going to take out the human element and show us what was really happening. So uh, let me get set up. Let me get the camera over there and let's go load up 10 on the uh, Hendersons and 10 on the Gerode. I just realized while getting ready to load up the test brass, I did not show you guys how you adjust length on the Henderson. So I did show you how I use a wooden die and obviously it comes with, uh, you know, the Gerode comes with a die ring that you can adjust the, um, the holder up and down for your length. The Henderson uses a very simple screw mechanism. And if you've seen my review on the Henderson itself, you've seen how I've kind of detailed how this works, but it's a very simple, just threaded cap screw with a nylock on it. It looks really prehistoric. I promise you it is super adjustable. In fact, once you get used to this, you can make uh, one thousandths or less adjustments really quickly. Uh, you just pull this out, you make a quick adjustment with uh, uh, your wrench. So you stick that in, you just make a, a, little, a little turn with this and then it just goes in. Now the thing with, uh, with the Henderson is that when you do put in your stop, it's just uh, hand tight. You don't want to wrench on the thing. So you just go in till it stops and now it's repeatable. So those screws, you can have as many as you want for every caliber or piece of brass that you have. And you just unscrew one, put the next one in, and then that will automatically get you right back to your stop point. So uh, I think that's kind of important to, um, to understand. So, uh, all right, that being said, let's head over and see what we can do with the amp press. One more thing, since I just moved the Gerode and the Henderson to make room to dump some brass, I just thought I would show you, uh, having trimmed uh, probably close to 200 pieces of brass on the Henderson here, uh, you can see, in fact, let me get a piece of paper to make it easier. So you can see this is sort of the level of uh, shavings and there's just a few down in my track, but otherwise that's about all that comes out of the side of that. Uh, over here on the side that had the Gerode, uh, there is a little bit, it would be tough for me to show you because it's much finer if it, if it leaked out, but there's just a few pieces over here. So I just wanted to be totally transparent about you know, which, what each one leaves behind uh, when you're done using it. So, all right, I promise. Next time you see me, amp press. Uh, it occurred to me that I did not show you guys also the repeatability of each of these. So, uh, I have the 10 pieces of Gerode brass, and then I have 10 plus some blow-offs that I did with the Henderson. And I wanted to show you, obviously with the Henderson, it's super easy to show you guys. Let's see here. Let me just. Okay. So I know my light. In fact, let's see here. Does that help? Okay. So zero. Okay. And I'm setting this down. Zero. Zero, zero, Let's see. I'm trying to give both of these a really fair shake. So, well, this one is a thousandths off. That one's dead on again. I'm gonna do the 10 that I trimmed specifically for loading. All 
That one is a thousandths off. Another thousandths. So at most we've had a one thousandths variance. There's a half thousandths, which on a caliper like this is sort of insignificant. Yeah, half thousandths again. And the last one, oops. I have trouble getting them squared up sometimes here. And that one's right at a thousand. So, so overall, 10 pieces of brass. I did have some one thousandths variants on those. Uh, let's go to the Giro. Now you're probably wondering how am I going to measure uh, how am I going to measure the Giroud ones because they are shoulder to mouth. Well, I'm going to use my insert. So this is a custom milled off of my um, off my reamer, so it fits my brass perfectly. And what I can do, and this is again, I this is this one's going to be a little less exact. But what I can do is measure off the face of this against the mouth. And that's about the best thing I can think of. Now I'm going to be using the back side of the calipers to get the best read. So I'm going to put the face up against this and then take a reading off the inside here. You guys might remember this is a famous Eric Cortina trick where there's one measurement, two measurements, three measurements, and the never talked about fourth measurement back here. But for something like this, that's where that fourth measurement really comes in handy. So I'm going to push this up against the face and I can hold it here where it's square. So I'm doing my best to hold this square and bring, bring this up all while holding the brass in. Okay, so I'm gonna zero it. Now I expect to have some variance because this is not an exact measurement. And that's, you know, that's okay. The, the point of it is that we're getting really close. So there's two thousandths. I mean, it even has to do with my angle holding this thing. One and a half thousandths. One and a half thousandths. So sometimes it's just a function of which piece of brass you zero it off of. You know, if they're all one to one and a half thousandths, then really most of them are within half thousandths of each other, and then you know one or two are outlying. So again, depending on here, we're at half thousandths. So you can see again, the repeatability on the Giroud is really, really good. And you know, there's half thousandths. It could be just a hair more, a hair less, just because of the angle I'm holding this thing. One and a half. One. That one's two, even after bumping it a couple times. All right, so this one's coming up pretty high at five thousandths. Now, in, in the interest of being totally fair on this, I don't mind giving it one more hit just to make sure it wasn't operator error. Yeah, this one's still coming in like four and a half thousandths. So I think what this really illustrates is not the repeatability of the uh, press itself, but it's probably going to point more towards the repeatability of the shoulder bump. And, you know, this would be a situation where. Um, you know, there's something in this particular piece of brass that when it was sized is not, um, you know, probably sitting exactly the same. Uh, you know, I'd find it hard to believe that it would be off by that much when all the rest of these were 
you know, one or one and a half at the most. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, I, I would say that is an anomaly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't base my decision on that. But point being, both of these are incredibly repeatable. There's always going to be some amount of user um, interference with either one of these. Uh, because you have an ability to set up you know, the cutter on this, uh, you know, how hard you push. I mean, brass does bend. You know, if you really lean on the Gerode and you're really pushing, uh, you can technically, uh, I've, I've noticed you can bend the shoulder just a little bit and you'll feel it touch all of a sudden. Uh, I've done that, you know, while testing for fun. Uh, you know, with the Henderson, uh, you can't really push on it any harder than this stop allows you to. But the user interface or the interference would come from getting it into the collet straight, uh, you know, making sure that your uh, neck diameter is very close to the pilot so you're not getting any kind of wobble in there. So, I mean, there are opportunities on both of these where you could uh, impact the ultimate, uh, you know, consistency of them. But I think this does prove that, uh, you know, by and large, these are both very repeatable machines. So. All right, now I promise we are getting to uh, the amp press. I'm gonna get these, put some powder in them. I know I've said that before, but uh, I just really wanna make sure I did a complete job on this. So we're gonna get powder primers, uh, throw a bullet on top and then head to the amp press and let's see if we see a difference on the graphs. As promised, here we have uh, our ammo ready to go. So these are our Gerodes. These are Hendersons. These are blow-offs that were also done on the Henderson. I'll put them in the box accordingly. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. We'll just knock out the Gerode first since they are first in line here. Second one had a big spike on entry, but I don't know. Weird. So, with the exception of number one, which pressured out at 57, it looks like these are all right in the 80s. That one was 70. So far we are anywhere from 57 to 89. That one was 101. Now I didn't do anything different to either one of these. They were both expanded uh, using the same exact uh, gauge pin. No lubricant of any kind, nothing like that. So no, no advantage to one over the other in terms of you know, how much neck tension there should be or any of that. And I will tell you, I'm running uh, about two and a half thousandths neck tension on these. So. All right, so there's the 10 from the Gerode. And let's go ahead and save that. done some testing but um, let's see here all right so let's clear the plots all right now I'm not gonna do I'm just gonna do a 10 for 10 comparison so I'll put these ciders separately and we will just do the 10 here so um, I did do a test originally but I forgot that it was a little unfair uh, in the way that I did it because I had actually trimmed on the Gerode after 
messing around on the Henderson. So it was not uh, a one-to-one -one thing. So everything you've seen in the video here uh, is like fresh brass prep all the way through for each trimmer. Uh, nothing was piggyback on each other. So I wanted to make sure it was as impartial as possible. So far these are a much smoother curve. They do not have that initial seating force spike that the the ones with the Gerode had. And that goes all the way back to my other testing that I've done when I first got the amp press. Um, I noticed that no matter what I did uh, with the Gerode, it was getting an initial seating spike. And the only way I could eliminate that by was, was basically by doing almost none or no chamfering of any kind. It seems like with the Henderson, whether it's an angle or what, I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm not getting that initial pre uh, pressure bump where it kind of goes up and comes back down like you saw on the Gerode. I can't tell you yet if that really means anything on paper. I can only tell you what it shows on the graph here. So the other one we had, uh, what am I remembering, 59 to 101 or something was our pressure differences across 10 rounds. On this one here, uh, I'm ranging anywhere from, let's see, 58 on the low end, 58.3 up to 86.7. So a much narrower window, a lot more consistent seating force uh, as you look uh, on the actual graph and uh, I'll pull these up on their own in a second. You've been watching them kind of up in the corner as I do this. Uh, but let me finish out these. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick. And uh, let's see, what do we got? Henderson. Okay, and then we're going to clear. And then I'm just going to do these six as a separate and just see what happens here. I don't have to use the spoon. I mean, once in a while, one's a little sticky, but usually I just like using it. I know guys I shoot with when we load at matches. You know, some use anything from a dental pick to a screwdriver. Um, I like these little spoon. It's a swizzle spoon type thing from a liquor cabinet that I broke in half. I just happen to really like them. But, I mean, these are coming out fine without it, so. so that, was, that was a little bit lower. Oddly enough, it was a little bit lower, and it was actually one that was a little sticky in there. All right, so about the same, 61 to 88, almost the same range as the first 10. Uh, so, you know, kind of interesting. Again, with the Gerode, at least in my experience, and, you know, take it for what it is, uh, my experience has been that when using the Gerode, I'm getting uh, an initial pressure spike, which we'll look at in a second here, uh, as opposed to a smoother curve. Uh, I'm going to shoot these tomorrow night, or actually, yeah, tomorrow night at the 600-yard line. And it's going to be pretty nasty weather, so I'm not sure we're going to see anything. Uh, but I am kind of excited to see what the difference is on the chronograph in terms of maybe ES and SD between the 10 rounds with the Gerode versus the 10 rounds with uh, the um, Henderson. I think it might show something. I don't know. It could be the same. Uh, but hey, any data we can get is going to be good. So now that I've got this finished, we just need to get them out to the range, which is tomorrow night. That means uh, you guys probably see this video when I finish it up on Wednesday, so it's Monday right now. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for taking this journey. I know this is a very long comparison video, but hopefully it covers you know a lot of different aspects uh, between these two great trimmers. See you guys in a minute.
All right, let's look at where things stand at the end of all this. Uh, you saw the amp press, you saw how the Henderson had, uh, you know, kind of a, a more gradual curve. The Giraud had kind of that spike that we're used to, sort of that seating impact uh, that is very common uh, on a lot of the testing that I've done. And I've seen other people with the same, uh, you know, kind of initial spike. And here's what I have. Now, this is a very small sample test. Uh, it is not indicative of either trimmer's probably true capabilities. This is just a point in time with me just doing a, a quick test with the settings that I normally run with. So these two were blow offs uh, just to get everything uh, blown out. And then what I have is these two are the same and these two are the same. And I just did a couple random tuner settings on the rifle just to see what would happen. And you can see over here, this is the Gerard, uh, this is the Henderson. Uh, I had an ES of 16 with an SD of 8.3. And then with the Henderson, it was 10 and 5.1. So a fairly significant drop. And then uh, over here, I went to a different tuner setting and had an ES of six with an SD of 3.2 on the Gerard versus three and 1.9. So almost half with the Henderson. Group size, uh, you know, obviously the Gerard's a little more open here. And then the Henderson tightened up again, exact same rounds, everything, just same tuner setting, uh, just trimmer is the only difference. And then same thing over here, uh, you know, and there's always a little bit of shooter error in here. The fact that it's not a perfectly tuned load, it's an old barrel. Like there's a lot of things that we can say, you know, potentially impacted the results. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, diss one trimmer or the other. I'm just trying to show you what I had. Uh, you can see that I had you know, two impacts and then a little flyer here. This one was a closer uh, to a three shot group with about half the ES and, and uh, uh, you know, at least 35, 40% less SD. So, you know, to me, this definitely shows that there's something compared to, uh, to that. Now, all of that being said, the Gerard is probably easier and faster if you want to make adjustments to the actual cutting head, you can add or remove how much chamfers on the inside versus the outside. Uh, the Henderson is probably not quite as easy to do that with because of the Forrester um, trimmer, uh, but still can be done. Uh, but I did find that the setting from, from him directly did a fantastic job and I'm, I'm not gonna touch it. Um, this also was the trimmer where I shot, uh, I can't remember if I talked about it or not, but uh, this is also, uh, I ran uh, a bunch of brass through with my Henderson initially and shot 49 shots with an ES of 14, I think it was, or 15, and an SD of 4.1. Um, so it definitely tells me that the Henderson is set up well and it's doing a great job. A couple final key points, you know, as we look at this is, is I'm not trying to tell you to buy one or the other. I think they're both fantastic units. I know plenty of guys that use both. Uh, and the more I've talked to people and the more people have come out and said, oh, hey, yeah, I haven't had Henderson. I just don't really talk about it or whatever. It's not something that comes up. Uh, so they are out there. They are being used. Um, uh, talking to him yesterday, he has plenty of them being used out in the commercial market as well uh, for people that do um, uh, like specialty uh, caliber loading uh, as a commercial business. Uh Initial downsides to, uh, or upsides to different ones. We've talked about the differences, but here's something else to consider. As of today, uh, you know, 2021, the Gerard honestly does a lot more calibers. Uh, the way it's set up, the way it uses its, its system um, with different inserts, it covers a really wide range of calibers. The Henderson is a little more limited. Uh, I can't remember the exact caliber that it goes up to, but it's somewhere in the 33 caliber um, range. Uh, I want to say up to like 338 or just under 338. I can't remember exactly. Um, but again, he's really open about it. if you call him and say, hey, here's the caliber I'm looking at doing. Will it work? Uh, you know, you're good to go. A buddy of mine called him up the other day and said, hey, uh, talk to John. He liked your unit. I was considering it. Uh, here's the calibers I load. And, and you know, Henderson was super cool and said, hey, look, I, I don't think this is the right unit for you right now. Uh, but he is working on a um, sort of an ELR version, big calibers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, he didn't give an exact date when it would be out, but he is working on a large caliber unit. So that would be pretty cool for those guys. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a toss up. You've got um, relatively high cost on both. Obviously, the Henderson's a little bit more. Uh, you know, they work in a different way. 
And I think, uh, you know, hopefully you've looked at this video. I know it's long and there's a lot of stuff to, to kind of wade through. But for me, trimmers are a really important decision. And I know there's going to be a ton of people that blow up the comments that both of these are irrelevant and you should just get a tri-trim or, you know, something, a three-way trimmer that goes on a, on a drill. And, and that's a totally different argument. And I'm not trying to compare these units with those units, um, you know, and who knows, maybe I'll buy a couple of those just so I can make a video on them uh, and show those off. I'm not trying to compare those two. Um, what I'm trying to compare is the two best, uh, you know, trim chamfer deburr units that are on the market, what they both do well, and why you may want to choose one or the other. So uh, I hope you found this informative. I look forward to the comments. I can only imagine what I'm going to get. And uh, with that, I hope you guys have a good one. Talk to you later.